This video is about T-scores. A T-score is an inferential statistic. It is used to infer the significance of the difference between two means. Like many other statistics that we've talked about in this course, a T-score is parametric. That means that it assumes that the population from which the sample is drawn must be normally distributed. There are four types of t-tests. The one sample t-test is used in a sample versus norms design. The dependent samples t-test is used in a repeated measures design. The independent samples t-test is used in a separate groups design. There's also a t-test that looks for the significance of a correlation coefficient. The degrees of freedom tell us what row to look on with our t-table. For one sample and dependent samples designs, we look at the sample size minus one for our degrees of freedom. For independent samples and correlation designs, the degrees of freedom is n minus two. Let's look at the one sample t formula. For the numerator, we take the sample mean minus the population mean. Don't worry if you get a negative number. We can ignore the negative sign because we're going to be using a two-tailed test. We then divide by the standard deviation, preferably of the population. We then multiply this quotient times the square root of n minus 1. Let's look at, look at an example here. Suppose we have a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10 for our population norms. We find that we have a sample mean of 85 in a sample size of 9. To get our numerator, 85 minus 80 equals 5. We then divide that by the standard deviation of 10 to get 0.5. We then get our degrees of freedom. 9 minus 1 equals 8. We square root 8 to get 2.83 and multiply that times 0.5. This yields a t-score of 1.41. Now we have to go to a t-table to infer the significance associated with that t-score. I'm going to encourage you to always use a two-tailed table unless you have a justification why a one-tailed table would be acceptable. We look at the proper row, 8, and we see which column of significance we qualify for with our particular t-score. We look at the critical value, 1.86, associated with a t-score that would be significant at the 0.1 level. We see that our t-score of 1.41 does not qualify, so we are not significant at the 0.1 level, and we must say p greater than 0.1. In other words, our results are not significant. We must accept the null hypothesis. Let's look at another example using the same norms of a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10. This time, our sample size of 9 
had a sample mean of 92. We take the 92 minus 80 for a numerator of 12. We divide by the standard deviation of 10 for 1.2. We get our df of 8. We take its square root for 2.83. And we multiply 2.83 times 1.2 for a t-score of 3.39. We go down to row 8 again, and we look at the different columns to see how significant we are. We look at the first column, and we see we do qualify. Let's keep going. We look at the critical value in the second column, and once again our t-score is larger than that, so we qualify at that level as well. Let's keep going. We look at our next column to see if we qualify. Let's keep going. We then look at the last column to see if we qualify, and we do not. So a t-score of 3.39 means that we qualify at the 0.01 level, but not the 0.00. .00 one level. So P is less than 0 0.01. That's good significance. We can reject the null. Now some statistical programs for calculating a T do not really give you a T score, but go ahead and jump all the way to give you the P. So be very careful when using statistical programs such as Excel and make sure that what you get in the end result is really a T or a P. My verdict on T-scores is that they're very useful, but along with chi-square, the T-score is one of the most overused and inappropriately used of all the inferential statistics. It is good to consider non-parametric alternatives to the t-test, especially when we have small samples and variables that are probably not normally distributed. For a one-sample design, I recommend the kolmogorov smirnov test as an alternative. For a dependent samples t, consider the sign test. For independent samples T, we have a variety of alternatives. Mann Whitney, Wilcoxon, Kolmogorov Smirnov, and my favorite, the Pittman Exact Probability Test. Very useful for small samples. For correlations, we can also use the Pittman Exact Probability when the sample size is small. This has been another Headless Professor video. Create your very own video podcast from PowerPoint. Log on to authorstream.com. It's absolutely free.